Hello. In this video, we are going to derive expressions for the chemical potential in the case of a system with two phases. Recall that for a closed system, our expression for the differential of the Gibbs energy, dg, is equal to v dp minus s dt, where v is the volume, s is the entropy, p is the system pressure, and t is the thermodynamic temperature. Now, let us imagine an open system with two phases. As an example, we can have a system where we have a liquid, and we also have the same chemical and the gas phase. And let's also assume that the number of molecules in the liquid is N1, and the number of molecules in the gas phase is going to be N2. We will use the fact that the Gibbs free energy is a safe function to write it in terms of partial derivatives. So it's equal to the partial derivative with respect to temperature times dt plus the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the pressure times dp. And now we're going to make use of the fact that we have an open system. So the number of molecules N1 and N2 can change. So we have the partial derivative with respect to the number of molecules N1 times dN1 plus the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of molecules N2 times dN2. We recall that the partial derivative of G with respect to T is minus the entropy, so that's minus S. We also know that the uh, partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to pressure is simply the volume, so we have plus V. And now we get to something new, we have the partial derivative of G with respect to the number of molecules N1, and this is the chemical potential with respect to the first substance, so we call that mu sub 1. And then finally, the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of molecules N2 is the chemical potential for the second substance, the substance in the gas phase. So now we have a more complete expression for the differential of the Gibbs energy for the case of an open system, and particularly an open system with exactly two phases. Now we're going to do two separate things. The first thing is we're going to fix the temperature and the pressure. And as a result of those, the reason why we're going to do that is, in that particular case, dt is going to be equal to zero, and dp is also equal to zero. So that is the first thing that we want to do. The second thing we want to do is to assume that we are at equilibrium. And if we do that, we have that the differential of G is going to be equal to zero. With those two assumptions, now we get for our expression that zero is equal to the chemical potential of one times dn1 plus the 
chemical potential of 2 times dN2. Now we want to notice something about our two-phase system that molecule number one and molecule number two are in equilibrium to each other with this particular stoichiometry as one molecule of liquid turns into gas the number of molecules of N1 decreases and the number of molecules of N2 increases by one so because of that we notice as an important consequence that the differential dN1 has exactly the opposite sign of dN2. And what this tells us is that as N1 increases, N2 decreases. Similarly, as N1 decreases, N2 increases. So now that we've done that, we can rewrite our expression right here in terms simply of dN1. So we have that D1, Dn1, now minus M2 Dn1. Also, because of that, we can write an equality that the chemical potential of 1 times dN1 is equal to the chemical potential of 2 times dN1. What is our result? Well, our conclusion we can draw then is that so long as we are at equilibrium, that the chemical potential of 1 is going to be exactly equal to the chemical potential of 2. And we'll see that we can use this condition as an equivalent condition for equilibrium, for a two-phase system. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.